turn to God, its crown as head of nations will be removed, and that I believe a great shaking is coming to this nation and to the world. As to when these things are to take place, I have from the beginning always issued a strong caution, in spoken word and in writing, from the mystery of the Shemitah itself and onward, specifically that we cannot be dogmatic about timing and that nothing has to take place on any given or particular date or season or according to any set calendar or even as God has done before. I have ministered that it's wise to be aware of the signs and seasons of the times and that though such things can take place on biblically relevant times or dates, nothing has to happen on any particular date, whether within the parameters of the Shemitah or in its wake, and that our focus can't be on dates but has to be on God and getting right with Him. At the same time, we remain in a dangerous period. And one of the reasons I've always cautioned against dates as far as being absolute or dogmatic is that I never wanted such focus to obscure or minimize the larger picture. Namely, that regardless of what does or doesn't happen on any particular date, America is racing toward judgment. In the mystery of the Shemitah, I share of biblical patterns which at times have had stunningly precise manifestations. Each of the last two Shemitah cycles has climaxed with the greatest stock market point crashes in history on the same exact day, the same exact biblical day, a once in seven year day that happens to be appointed in the Bible for the effecting of financial remission and nullification. It remains a stunningly and eerily precise historical reality and phenomenon. And precisely because it's so precise and because it happened in the last two of the Shemitah cycles, Many saw it as an absolute that a massive stock market day crash had to take place on the next such day, September 13th. Thus, we have cautioned repeatedly that this particular manifestation in any particular manifestation does not have to occur in every or any one of the Shemitah cycles. At the same time, having said that and having said again all these things, there are a number of very large and significant facts to be noted. The Shemitah of 2015 has in fact followed the most prevalent of the Shemitah's templates. What was missed by many in focusing only on one day was that the largest and most prevalent of the Shemitah's templates has in fact manifested. The Elul 29 day crash is only one of several manifestations, an exception and a minority template. In each of the last seven of the Shemitahs, there has been a collapse, but only two of the seven collapses have involved and a Lul 29 day crash. The majority have taken place according to a much larger template. The larger and by far the predominant of the Shemitah's templates is that of a long-term collapse, a collapse taking place over the course of several months, or one in which a rising stock market comes to an end, peaks within the Shemitah year, reverses its momentum, and begins a continuous descent. This descent may at times involve increasing volatility and dramatic day crashes, particularly in proximity to the Shemitah's climax. And that is exactly what happened in the Shemitah of 2015. The 2015 Shemitah has followed this larger and predominant of the Shemitah's patterns, a template that appears repeatedly in the book. Following the Shemitah's pattern, the Shemitah of 2015 ended a rising stock market on May 19th, a market that then reversed its overall momentum and began a long-term descent for the rest of the Shemitah year. As it approached its final phase, the stock market and its descent grew increasingly and dramatically volatile. Nearing its conclusion in late August, the Shemitah produced some of the most dramatic days in stock market history, most notably what would be called Black Monday and which would trigger the collapse of stock markets throughout the world. The Shemitah of 2015 produced the greatest stock market intraday collapse in history, a crash of over a thousand points. It would usher in the dramatic financial collapse of the world's new economic engine, China. The collapse of China's financial realm alone constituted one of the greatest long-term stock market crashes in history and by itself would make 2015 one of the most significant of Shemitahs. The amount wiped out from the Shanghai Exchange in the space of just a few months was over 40%. The 10th and the 8th greatest stock market point crashes in U.S. history happened during the Shemitah. 
The event of Black Monday this August also did, as it has been noted, 3,000 points were wiped out of the markets of Japan. One-fourth were wiped away from the markets of Germany. The Shemitah wiped out 16% from the United Kingdom, 18% of the French markets, and 4,000 points from the Indian markets. The Shemitah wiped out 12,000 points of the Brazilian markets. The amount wiped out by the Shemitah of 2015 from the U.S. market peak to Elul 29, the Shemitah's end, would approach $2 trillion. The amount wiped out from international markets in the same period would exceed $5 trillion. The last time such a global collapse took place was seven years ago, the year 2008, the year of the Shemitah. In many of the Shemitah's years, the turbulence and collapse continues and may intensify past Elul 29 in the period of the Shemitah's wake, which can be a very dangerous period. In others, they don't. But whatever happens from this point forward, and in a dangerous time, the Shemitah has already and again powerfully manifested. Other key manifestations that have marked 2015 as an especially significant Shemitah year. The mystery of the Shemitah chronicles how the Shemitah has marked the shifting of world power. So it was again. The American age began in the year 1871 when it became the strongest economic power on earth. Within the parameters of the Shemitah of 2015, that era has officially come to an end. America is no longer the strongest economic power on earth. In the Shemitah of 1973, well, it became a milestone year in America's moral and spiritual collapse, its fall from God, as the Supreme Court legalized the killing of the unborn. The Shemitah of 2015 was no less a milestone year in this fall, as it was the year that the nation's hedges protecting the biblical definition of marriage collapsed across the land and were then by the Supreme Court conclusively struck down. I've said that I believe it wisdom to be prepared and that regardless of what happens or not, it's always wise to have essentials on hand and yet that each needs to be led by the Lord in doing such things. For you who have done it, I believe you've been wise and are prepared and better off than you would have been otherwise. Regardless of what the future holds, it is a wise insurance that can always be used. And of course, the most important preparation that anyone can do is to get and be right with God. I've said, and I repeat now, that I believe we are standing as a nation in danger of judgment. The Shemitah is one template by which judgment may be manifested. But whether or not what is yet to come will be joined to what has happened in the most recent Shemitah already, I believe that this nation is in and is approaching days both critical and perilous. I see ahead, apart from the hand of God, days of apostasy and persecution, and by the hand of God, a great shaking. At the same time, God's heart is salvation. And the purpose of shaking is to bring to repentance and salvation and revival those who will come. At this point, I believe it is only through shaking that a true and great revival can come to America. For you who would seek safety, the word for safety in Hebrew is Yeshua, and Yeshua is the name of Jesus. So the only way to be safe is to be in Jesus, Yeshua. As for you who are in Yeshua, you are in God, the safest place to be is in the will of God. Make sure that's where you are. Know that in all things, God remains absolutely on the throne. And the one who lives in his will lives and stands on the winning side. Now is not the time to be silent or fearful or compromised, but to be all the more strong and all the more bold. When the night comes and the dark grows even darker, it's time then for the lights of God to shine even brighter. Be strong and of good courage. Proclaim the good news of Messiah and pray for revival, but don't only pray for revival, live in revival. As the apostasy progresses, as America races toward judgment, as the biblical signs, principles, and harbingers of judgment continue to manifest, and as the events of the last days continue to unfold, I will and we must continue to sound the trumpet and the alarm and to call to repentance those who will come 
and to draw the lost to Messiah.